Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed this marathon. So if you've learned something new in this video, so please do share this with your friends and do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So before we sign off, I just wanted to give you guys a small message. Now, guys, there are many students I've seen. They feel that, you know, they failed many times and, uh, you know, it's only failure that they keep seeing in their lives every time. So whether should I write this attempt or I should not write this attempt, all these things, you know, these kind of confusion is there. Now, trust me, you are not the only person who feels like that. So you are not alone in this. So many students, including myself as a student, I have felt like this many times. So you are not alone in this. Remember one thing, hard work will never fail you. So you just keep putting your efforts and you just leave the results. Don't think about the results today. Right now, you just focus on the things that are within your control. You take an example of MS Dhoni. So now MS Dhoni, even during the times when, you know, he's under a lot of pressure, he's calm and cool in his head. And that is the reason automatically he actually makes the entire, uh, he makes us all proud by, you know, making sure that India wins the game. So basically what he says, after an interview, uh, after the match got over in an interview, uh, someone asked Dhoni, like, the entire stadium was, you know, uh, we were all tensed and you just seem to be, you know, calm and all that. So how are you able to do that? The very simple thing that he said is you just focus on the things that are within your control. You focus on the controllables. The next delivery, the ball that the bowler is going to bowl, that is in my control. I can set the field accordingly. But, but. Whether winning or losing, that is not in my control. That is a consequence of whatever actions that we do. Now, this is exactly what I tell my students as well. These are certain things that you can learn from legends like people around. Now, I generally share the story of Ratan Tata. Uh, if you've already attended the Costing Marathon, so I would have already shared this before. You know, Ratan Tata, just a small story and a key takeaway from this, a much, much needed uh, lesson, a life lesson that we all need to learn. You know, Ratan Tata, actually, uh, you know who Ratan Tata is. So he is the man in charge of uh, this Tata group of companies. So the startup group of companies in the flagship, uh, the topmost company, the holding company is called as Tata Sons. And this Tata Sons has many group companies inside it, like Tata Consultancy Services, right? You have Tata Motors, Tata LXC, you have many companies, Tata Power and all. Now, now, Tata was already into so many business. Now they wanted to enter into automobile business. They want to enter into automobile business. So they started something called as Tata Motors. So now they started this Tata Motors and uh, you know, this company was doing and they just started the business. They were doing something. Somehow Ratan Tata felt that, you know, he is not able to uh, justify in this Tata Motors. He is not able to show big results in this Tata Motors. So what he did was he went to the United States. He went to the US to meet Mr. Henry Ford. So Henry Ford is the chairman of Ford, this company called as Ford Automobiles. So he's the chairman of Ford. So uh, Mr. Ratan Tata went to Henry Ford. He said, look, I'm helpless with this company alone. I'm successful in all other companies, but this uh, Tata Motors alone. So somewhere I feel, you know, we're not able to make much of profits. So are you willing to buy my company? So he offered to sell his company to Ford. Now this guy, Henry Ford, he should have said, yes, I'm ready to buy or no, I'm not ready to buy. Either of these two things is what he should have said. You know, he said, he said, look, this automobile sector is all for Americans. So you Indian people are not fit to run this automobile industry and all. He said something like that. And then, and then he said, anyway, since you have come to me for help and all, so I will pay you this much and uh, you can just sell your company and go off. That's all. Basically, he treated not just Ratan Tata with disrespect. He actually made the entire nation. He actually talked about the entire nation. He said, no, look, you guys are not even fit for this. Now, Mr. Ratan Tata, a man of such a high stature and dignity, he walked back from this room and when he took his flight from the US back to India, he told himself one thing, no matter what, I'm going to put all my efforts on this company, Tata Motors, and make sure that this company makes it to the top one day. Now, what he did, he came back to India. 
he put a lot of efforts in this company slowly this company started growing big this company started growing big and even today if you see you know what in india you have this uh, car to even today you have this car called as tata indica right you know what this car is all about this is the first car that is made 100 percent in india that was first introduced by tata motors only Yes, 100%. Every component is also made and assembled in India only. So Tata brought this. And of course, Tata is the leader in all the commercial vehicles uh, segment. If you see this Tata AS and all for all the commercial purposes for all their goods transportation. So Tata is actually leading in this. Now slowly Tata became a very, very huge company in this automobile sector. So the Tata Motors grew to such extent. And there came a time somewhere in the year 2008 when there was a great economic recession there was a huge financial crisis and in europe this company this company ford they were holding they were actually owning two companies called as jaguar and land rover right now during this year 2008 now ford was not able to manage these two companies jaguar and land rover because of the recession that hit the entire country and now guess what happened our guy ratan tata he went to Mr. Henry Ford and he said, don't worry, I will rescue you. So I will purchase these two companies, Jaguar Land Rover. And today, this Jaguar Land Rover is owned by Tata Motors. Are you clear with this? So basically what happened, this man of such a high stature, now look at the way he replied back to this Henry Ford. He didn't, you know, this guy Henry Ford had initially what he did, he had basically what uh, he had uh, made him feel bad, he had talked something bad about him. Generally what people do, we go to the press and we will see. If we are of a person like uh, Ratan Tata, you will say, look, this guy did this and all, he's talking bad about me. Look what Mr. Ratan Tata did. Two life lessons that we need to learn from him. The first thing is determination. He told himself that no matter what, one day this company, I will make you to the top. And not just that, he went back and he rescued the same person who once intimidated him. Now just imagine what kind of gesture is that, right? That is the first learning that we need to learn. And number two, work hard in silence. Let your success make all the noise. He didn't go around and say, no, one day I will make Tata Motors great and all these things. No, he worked hard in silence and the result talked for itself and the results talked for itself. Clear with this. This is exactly what he did. And guys, this is what even we need to follow. Now, now what you need to do is right now, just stay focused with the process. Whatever work that you are doing, just stay focused on it. Just do not worry about your results. Whether you pass or fail, that is definitely not in your control. What is right in your control is this very second with which we can use and prepare for your exams. You make the maximum use of the every second that passes by. And automatically, automatically what will happen, the results will only be in your favor. You need not worry about it. So work hard in your silence. Let your success make all the noise. You need not go around and keep telling people that I'm reading for studying for 15 hours a day, 10 hours a day. No. You do it in silence, the results will talk for itself, clear? And don't worry about the results today. The results will automatically come if you focus on your preparation. Fine, guys, this is one small thing that I wanted to share with you because generally as we, uh, you know, as we enter the exam zone, as we near the exam dates, generally there is a huge uh, human tendency for all of us to feel tense. Now, I'm just requesting you guys not to feel tense. I know it's easy to say every time you feel tense, just ask yourself, what is the thing that is making me feel tense? It is about the result. Let me not worry about the result this very second. Let me do whatever I'm responsible to do. So this second, let me just prepare for my exams and automatically the results will be in your favor. Are you clear with this? So on that note, I'm signing off with this uh, revision marathon. All the very best to you guys. And I'm sure you will make it very big in your life. So thank you all so much and see you all in CA final.